Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my November favorites because it's the beginning of December and that's just what you do, right? And also, it'll technically be like the last like monthly favorites of the year because at the end of next month, it's going to be my yearly favorites. Let's savor this one. It's gonna be really weird. It's gonna be really weird because I have a selection of random things to talk about. So let's get going, shall we? First and foremost is something that left my collection for literal years. And I didn't get my hands on this until about two months ago when the Riley Rose opened at South Center Mall. And it's my own term. They, they did not have these. They do not have these at drugstores near me. I don't know why the only place that I could get this was Uwajamaya because it's not an Asian brand. I don't understand, but they have it at Riley Rose now and I can buy this. So I'm really happy that this is back in my life because I like it better. Cause it doesn't have any sort of smell. Like the La Roche-Posay had like a very faint smell, but my sister made it sound like that I was like putting nail polish remover on my face. She was like, why does this smell so strong? Like this smells horrible. This doesn't smell like anything. And it's so good. It is such a good makeup remover, all around good cleanser for folks with very sensitive skin like me. I love it. I love this. I love you so much. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> Speaking of skincare, one thing that I started using again, and I'm actually looking for an alternative for it, is the Ordinary Lactic Acid 5% plus Hyaluronic Acid 2%. And I really, really love this lactic acid, but I never would ever spend the amount of money that like the Sunday Riley one is. And I don't necessarily want to support the Ordinary anymore. So if you guys know of any like good, alternatives to this, let me know. Um, this is the 5% because like I said, my skin is sensitive as fuck. So I have to use something that's very, very mild and very, very gentle. I've been using this probably every other night on my face. And I think that it's been actually helping with a lot of the like dry peeliness that I was getting on my nose. It's good. And I really like how it smells. It smells like printer cartridges and like new paper. I don't know why, but it does. A few other things that I got from Riley Rose that have now turned into like legit favorites. The Moonlighter Highlighter in Squid. I think I might've talked about it last month just because I was so damn excited about it, but I have used this literally almost every single day. I'm not wearing it today because I wanted to try out some new products and I wanted to try some different things on my face, but literally every day I've been wearing this and it's so pretty. It's so good as an inner corner highlight, as like a nose bridge highlight, as just like a regular cheek. It's just a great highlighter. If I didn't already own the Anastasia Moonchild palette, I would probably go buy like three more of these in the colored ones, but like I have colored ones already. So like, this is just, it's good. It's good. I love it. And I just love the like design of it all. Like it's so pretty. And because I was holding these in my hand, I couldn't hide these. The Spectrum Cosmetics brushes have been been so nice and so good. This has been a really great brush to just put down like a transition shade. The initial, like the first brush that I use, this is the B06. I'm assuming it stands for blending. And then this one is the C04, which cheek, I think that's probably cheek. This is insanely soft. Like I honestly don't think I've ever felt a softer brush. The Real Techniques brushes are soft. The It Cosmetics brushes are soft. This though, oh boy. Like if you loved a soft brush, I'm honestly thinking about get going back and like finding a foundation brush in this line because my It Cosmetics brush, while I love it, it's like falling apart because the like ferrule is coming out of the... I love these. I love these brushes. <laughs> um, I just chugged like a coffee before I came in here because I didn't have any coffee since like three o'clock. My lipstick looking good. Okay. I mixed like three different brown lipsticks together to get this because I don't know why I was feeling like a very specifically like human shit colored brown lipstick, but I was. The Smoke Sessions palette from Mel Cosmetics has been such a wonderful addition to my eyeshadow collection. I have worn it by itself. I have worn it with neutral shades. I have worn it with the Gemini palette. I absolutely love it. The next video I will record will be 
this, like a review in-depth thing of this product, as well as Gemini, just kind of an overview of like my thoughts on Melt Cosmetics so far. And I, I'm loving this. It's very, very soft. So I've seen some uh, criticisms from people saying that theirs came broken or overfilled, which mine was a little bit overfilled as well, but I was able to kind of smush it down with my fingers and it hasn't broken. It hasn't had any issues since then. I don't know. It's just, it's such a nice palette. The packaging is good. The aesthetic is nice. And I'm not one of those people that like gets weirded out by weed themed things, obviously. And I don't know why people are, but I will go more in depth on my thoughts about that in the dedicated video about this, but I love it. And I'm so happy that I have it. Thank you. And I love the typography. Like it just matches everything. A few lush faves. Um... <sighs> Ectoplasm perfume, solid perfume, has become a surprise love. I have no idea why, because it smells like gummy bears, but it is so nice. I want this in a like actual sprayer because I would buy this in a spray perfume, but for a solid perfume, it's really, really nice. I don't know exactly what, the, I think there's grapefruit in it. What are the ingredients? Let me read the essential oils and the notes. Eh, eh. Come on. Ingredients, jojoba oil, castor oil, candelilla wax, tangerine, grapefruit, litsia cubeba. That's what it is. God, it's such a good scent. One that I would literally just eat in an entire setting is the Cranberry Fizz Lip Scrub. And oh my God, this might be my favorite lip scrub of all time, honestly. I don't think I've ever actually finished a lip scrub, but I might actually finish this one because not only is it sweet, but it is sour, like it is tart. I love the lip scrubs, don't get me wrong, but I feel like some of them are just like too sweet, like just sweet. So like the Kiss, I actually liked. Um, Sugar Plum Fairy was good, but it was just like really, really sweet. This has a balance of like tart with sweet. Castor sugar, fair trade shea butter, citric acid, peach kernel oil, cranberry seed oil, Brazilian orange oil, lime oil, ginger absolute. But one thing that I'm just gonna spray myself with because I am getting a backup. <laughs> this, I don't know how and I don't know why my favorite fragrance of all time is such a hard one to get my hands on. This is Lord of Misrule. And this is a scent that is infamous, I guess. It started as a bath bomb, then it came into a shower gel, and then they released it as a, like a body conditioner. And I think they did, what else smells like Lord of Misrule? Oh, the body scrub smells like Lord of Misrule as well. So there are multiple products that smell like Lom. But for me, the perfume is the perfect balance of scents for my taste. It is pepperier than all of the other bath products. I just love it. Like it's got, it's black pepper, patchouli, and vanilla, which is the weirdest selection of fragrances to put together, but they work so well and they're good all year round, but specifically in the winter time. And, oh, damn it. Hi, can I call you back in like 20 minutes? I'm on a vid, I'm filming a video. Hello video, do you see me? Yes, hi. So the other day, one of my lovely Instagram followers, thank you so much, I never would have known this, told me that on the Lush UK website and Lush Labs, they were releasing a limited edition line of perfumes of the like community favorites. One of them being Lord of Misrule. And I logged on on Friday, Saturday, I logged on on Saturday and I ended up getting one for myself, one for my friend Katie and we're going in together on the uh, shipping because if you've ever ordered perfume from Lush UK, you would know shipping is very expensive but it also means it comes very quickly. So those will be coming very soon. And I just had to express my love of Lord of Misrule and I love it, so, uh, it's so good. Uh, I never want it to go away. Which is why I had to buy the perfume and the perfume oil because um, then I will guarantee that it never goes away. Like there are lush things that I like love and that I cherish and that I hoard, but like Lord of Misrule is one of those perfumes that I, when I smelled it for the first time, it clicked. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know. You guys know me. You know that I don't get this way about products, but this scent specifically just is uh, like it 
Uh, like it. Makes me feel things. <laughs> Speaking of sense, uh, <laughs> so the other day at Bath and Body Works, it was the uh, candle sale day, uh, AKA all three wick candles were $8.95. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. All my candles at my house were running low and I needed more candles and I don't ever buy Bath and Body Works candles at full price because why? I bought six, it will last me all the way through the winter time. This one particularly has, has struck, a, struck a chord with me. This is winter. This one particularly, I don't know what it is about the scent. It's made with fir needle and orange essential oils with clove and citrus. Something about it reminds me of like antique stores and like gift stores during the holidays. Like walking into one of those like kind of kitschy gift stores that have like ornaments and jewelry and like really kind of tacky bags. Like if you've ever shopped in like a small town, they have those stores. That's what this smells like. It smells like one of those kitschy Christmas shops that you go walking around downtown on a Sunday and you park once and then you walk around and then you go get coffee and you get pie and then you go into this like little shop where it's like one person working. It smells like that. And also a combination of like my house growing up <laughs> during the holidays because we had a real tree up until I was about 17. And this smells like a Christmas tree with like weird pine cones and also a bit musty. Like it smells like my house growing up. Like it's so weird. It's so weird. How did you do this? How did you capture the smell of my house? I don't understand. Like it's weird how accurate it is. Now we're gonna get on to even more random things besides candles. Um, up until recently, I had never tried the LaCroix Key Lime. I honestly didn't know it existed until like two months ago. And then when I was at the store the other day, they had one box of this left. And I was like, I've tried every other flavor of LaCroix except the cola because God, no, I don't like coconut unless it's mixed with like things in a cocktail. But like, this was the only flavor that I hadn't tried. and. Whoa, baby, this is really good. I mean, I understand why it was always sold out of the QFC by my house, because it's really good. The first time I tasted it, I was like, it's, just, it's really good. I don't wanna open it because this is the last can. So, cause I drank it that fast. I kind of do a thing where I like buy a box of LaCroix and I finish it in like three days. One thing that uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen me wearing at least once. There's this brand out of Everett that some acquaintances of mine run and curate and make products. And they did a little contest last month and I'd been wanting to get stuff from them for a while. And I was like, cool, I'll enter this contest. I got this really sweet beanie. It says puke on it, obviously. The brand is called Scumbag, uh, Scum with S-K-U-M. I remember I was wearing this to Target one day. There was a lady walking around and she was like, oh, did you see the game? And I was like, huh? And she thought this was a Seahawks beanie because it's the same green. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. They also gave me a handful of pins. They have hoodies, they have hats, they have pins, beanies. They kind of like roll out different products every so often. So I'll post a link to the store in the description below. Um, they're pretty active on Instagram as well. So check them out if you like this kind of like grungy aesthetic. I enjoy it and I feel like it's a nice uh, combo with my hair color. I like it. So music favorites. So in September, my friends Douse actually got to play Band in Seattle, the show that I work on. And I've been working on their episode for a couple of weeks now and it finally gets to air this weekend. And because of that, I've been listening a lot to their record, The Light in You Has Left. And I just, I love it. It's such a good album. If you folks like kind of angry, like a juxtaposition of like angry and soft kind of art rock with like really weird melodic elements and just like, I don't know. It's very hard to describe their music because it, it's such a combination of things like all these different influences coming into one band. I know all of these things because I was watching through their interviews. So like, it's kind of weird working on a show and then you watch interviews from band members that you don't know yet as a person. And then you like start hanging out with them and you're like, 
I kind of know you better than you know me. This is kind of weird. <laughs> and that has been no different with Douse. And I am so, so happy that we finally were able to get them on band in Seattle. And I'm so happy that the episode finally gets to air this weekend because I'm very proud of it. The whole record you should listen to, but I will post links to the live performances in the description below because um, by the time I upload this, some of the live performances will be uploaded on YouTube because I have to do that tomorrow at work. But yeah, Douse has been on my playlist. I love them. And then a band that ha I have a weird way of discovering them. There's this band Shit Ghost. A couple of years ago, Shit Ghost started following me on Instagram, on my personal Instagram, not on my photo Instagram because I didn't have one yet. And I was like, what is this band? Like they didn't have any music out yet. I think it was just like a dude and a band. Like I, I, had, I had no clue what was going on. Like a year or so goes by and I'm at a show at like a DIY venue in Seattle. And this guy comes up to me and he was like, oh, hey, Abby. And I was like, who are you? And he was like, oh, I'm Sam from Shit Ghost. And I was like, okay. Did not realize that because Shit Ghost wears a mask all the time. And so I had never seen this man's face uh, because all over the internet, it's just like the head of a morph suit and some crazy glasses. I met him in a couple other places. We took some photos once in a bathroom. Um, yeah, uh, I finally got to see them play last weekend because they were doing some really sick, cool show with Pickwick and uh, it was surely an experience to behold. I think they call themselves like underwater psychedelic rock. That makes sense. It's very difficult to describe. At this point, I've just given up describing bands. It's definitely intriguing. <laughs> They have a song called Melt Your Brain that like the video consists of like a mannequin head melting. And then they have a song, which is actually probably my one of my favorite songs of theirs called Photos of Bread. <laughs> that starts with like a, a British woman doing a voiceover about teenagers looking at photos of bread. And I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand you, Sam. I like it, but I don't get it yet. <laughs> So yeah, that has been uh, music that I've been listening to and I've been enjoying this month. I guess technically last month because it's December as I'm recording this, but one other things have been my favorites. I don't really know. Uh, 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 uh. I think that might be all the favorite products I wanted to talk about. It's been quite a month. I realized the other day that um, November's ad revenue that I got uh, managed to pay half of my rent for December and it's fucking awesome. Like that fact alone almost made me cry knowing that I've been able to make that much on YouTube in November. And I realized also shortly thereafter that the number of subscribers that I have right now is almost exactly double what I had at the end of last year. And I had said at the end of last year, like a realistic goal for 2018 was to get out of my 13,000 subscriber funk. And look at me now. I am at 26,470 subscribers as I'm recording this. So that's fucking rad. So thank you to all of you who uh, have subscribed and watch my videos on a regular basis. It really means a lot. You don't even know. And thank you so much to my patrons. You guys mean so much to me. Um, I've been live streaming Sundays, so please keep up with that because I I kind of hang out there for sometimes like a couple hours. I get ready and let's like, we have like a nice little kind of like hangout chat and whatever. But yeah, thank you guys so much. You, you mean a lot. Thanks. My next video definitely will be the kind of review deep dive into the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions palette as well as the Gemini palette. Um, I wanted to give like a full on video about those things because they have been like, Gemini palette is literally like my favorite palette of the year and one of my favorite palettes of all time. So I wanted to dedicate an entire video to those. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.